Hi everyone, this is Amir Hussain Farzadi and I hope you are doing well. In this session, we are going to learn about genetic algorithm. Firstly, we will have a brief introduction to the theory of genetic algorithm and then we will implement a simple version of GA using MATLAB and Python. So let's have a brief look to the theory of genetic algorithm. As a matter of fact, GA is a special case of a class of algorithms known as evolutionary algorithms. And these types of algorithms are all about the evolution. They all try to simulate the process of biological evolution, but in the domain of numbers. And they can be used a variety of problems but mainly they are used to solve the optimization problems. So let's have a look to the general definition of an optimization problem and its similarities to the process of evolution. And then we will have the general structure of evolutionary algorithms. And finally, we will have the general structure of GAs. Okay, let's assume that we have a function f which accepts a parameter x and we want to find the minimum value of this function and we know that x contains these elements actually x1, x2, x3 and xn and if we assume that x1, x2 up to xn are all real number then x will be a member of r2n and we want to search among all possible solutions in this domain for this problem and we want to find this special solution x star which minimizes the value of objective function actually f of x so we have this problem and this is an optimization problem so assume that we have a planet named earth and we want to create the life on this planet actually we want to solve the problem of living on this planet and you know that nature solved this problem in millions of years and for example for conditions of north pole nature created polar bear and if the conditions change to jungle or mountains then it changed the same solutions the bear to the formal bear to brown or black bear we know actually we have a problem of living in different conditions in different geographies and we have some DNAs actually all possible DNAs which are created by four basic elements okay for example as the basis of the double helix of DNA known as timine adenine cytosine and guanine and we have these four alphabets of life and the nature found the effective combination of these basic elements actually to create life forms which are optimum or suboptimum in different conditions of planet earth and we actually humans and all other species on this planet we are all solutions to the problem of living on the earth okay so these are similar and similar to this structure of solution we have dnas here and similar to this objective function, we have conditions of living in different geographies on the Earth. So there is an obvious similarity here. So what is an evolutionary algorithm? We can simulate the process of evolution in the domain of numbers to solve this kind of optimization problem. So let's have a look to the general structure of an evolutionary algorithm. All of evolution algorithm starting with initialization, which means creating some random solutions for optimization problem. So we have an initial population which contains some randomly generated solutions to the optimization problem. And then we will pass this initial population to a loop known as evolution loop or loop of evolution. And the algorithm contains with that loop until some criteria satisfied. So we have initial population here and we are going to pass this to loop of evolution, okay? So first of all, we are going to select which member of current population, which is initial population is eligible or which one has more right to have access to more food or mating opportunities and other things that generally creatures are competing for that. So we are going to perform selection here and after this, 
we are going to perform some reproduction process here and the solutions are going to have offsprings and what can be the offsprings of a set of numbers or what can be the offsprings of a solution for an optimization problem it can be a similar solution it can be you know a combination of some solutions known as parent solutions just like in that nature and they can cooperate to create new solutions which probably is better and which probably you know inherits the advantages of its parents so they are going to reproduce and we are going to simulate the processes like crossing over which is simply the mating and we are going to simulate the mutation process in genetic algorithm which is uh, you know altering some genes randomly to make the algorithm more explorative and to enable the algorithm to create some innovative solutions for the problem so after this we have a population of offsprings and we have our initial population to our original population of parents and we are going to perform another selection and so this is the loop of evolution if some termination criteria has been met then we can terminate the execution of algorithm so we have the termination step here conditionally of course if the termination conditions are met we can met the execution of evolutionary algorithm so we have this general structure so we start with an initial population then we select by evaluating the solutions and performing competition among solutions and they are competing to have more opportunities to reproduce and they create offsprings and offsprings plus parents from a larger population and then they compete to each other and they select new parents they create new offsprings and this is being repeated until some termination criteria has been satisfied and finally we can terminate the execution of algorithm so this is the general structure of an evolutionary algorithm as i mentioned earlier genetic algorithm known as ga is a special case of evolutionary algorithm and it contains all of these elements but with more specifications so next we are going to review the general structure of genetic algorithm the general structure of genetic algorithm is as follows we have these steps in GA, as you can see here. At the first step, we are going to create an initial population. So we are going to perform initialization. And at the end of this step, we have an initial population, which is evaluated. And we know what value of objective function they have, okay? So after that, we are going to perform the crossover operation, which is a kind of reproduction. So we are going to select parents and perform crossover. So this is selecting parents. Actually, two parents are selected from the population and then they are crossed over to create two offsprings. So for two parents, we have two offsprings. And then we gather all offsprings as a population of offsprings. And after that, we perform mutation or we are going to mutate offsprings and meanwhile we can mutate the original population to have some different solutions and also we can use any combination of crossover mutation on offsprings population and the main population however here we are using this schema we are selecting parents, we are creating the population of offsprings, and then we are mutating the offsprings, actually not the main population, okay? So after mutating offsprings, we have a population of offsprings mutated, and for the original population, we are going to merge these two populations, okay? So merge main population and offsprings. So after that, we have larger population with more members and our original population and we must select the best members of this population. So we must evaluate them, we must sort them and finally we must select the top members of that population. So we are going to evaluate, sort and select 
And for the final step, we are going to check for termination conditions. And if the termination criteria has been met, then we can exit the algorithm, okay? And if it is needed to be continued, we are going to continue from step two. So go to step two if it is needed, okay? So if it is needed, we are going to step two and we're repeating the loop of evolution. So this is the general structure of genetic algorithm. But we must define this part actually, selecting parents, crossing over, mutation, and that's it. Selecting here, it must be defined as well. And we must define that how we are going to select parents and how we are going to perform crossover on two given parents and how we are going to mutate a given solution and how we are going, you know, select members from a population and how we are going to select top members, okay? For the next, we want to discuss these operators of genetic algorithm. First of all, let's talk about the crossover. So crossover is an operator which accepts the data from two parents, actually parents one and parents two. And we give the information from these two parents to crossover operator and we get the information and the data for two offsprings. So crossover uses some mathematical operators to combine the information from two parents and two offsprings inherit their properties and characteristics from two parents. And to do so, for example, let's assume that we have chromosome in binary format, as you can see in the next slide. But in that, what are these and their concepts will be taught in the next session. So for crossover operator, assume that we have chromosomes in binary format. For example, P1 is a chromosome and it is given by these binary numbers, actually the set of binary numbers. So as you can see, we have eight binary numbers, actually just zeros and ones, and they are as our first parents, okay? Well, we can show this as a graphical shape, as you can see here. Actually, we are going to use a binary cells and, you know, we are going to fill the cells corresponding to values of ones. So far, we have the first parent. And let's assume that we have another parent here, actually, one, 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 zero, zero, one, and zero. And I showed this as a graphical shape. As you can see, we have ones here and another one here. And so this is a graphical representation of our chromosomes. And if we are going to combine the information of these two parents, we can do this in several ways or using several operators. In this slide, I just closed the graphical shapes to each other. So for example, we can cut these from this place and then switch these parts, this known as, you know, a single point crossover. We are going to randomly select the position for cutting both of chromosomes and then switching one part. For example, the right hand side part, okay? And this results in two new chromosomes. We can simply display them as these, and they remain same, so we have these parts but the right hand side parts are switched so we have just one here and we have one here and two ones here and these are offsprings okay these are actually parents and this is offspring one and the next one is offspring two and they inherited some of characteristics from first parent and some of them from the second parent and so we have two offsprings. And hopefully, for example, if the answer is all zeros, then offspring one will perform better, actually will outperform its parents and the other offsprings, its sibling actually. So hopefully crossover will improve our solutions. And if we perform this crossover operation in, you know, in several generations, then we will have better and better solutions. And in some iteration or in some generation, we will probably find the solutions, actually the optimal solution of the problem. 
So this is the simplest crossover operator, actually single point operator, but we can do another type of crossover, okay? So for example, two point or double point crossover, which has two cutting points. And for example, we select these two cutting points and we switch the middle part here to get new alpha springs, okay? So what you can see here is double point crossover. And if we do so, we will get two alpha springs in this form. So these parts and these parts remain same, okay? So we have here and here, and we have this here and here. So we are going to change these middle parts. So we have this here and here, and this is the alpha spring one. So the next one is alpha spring two. So these are the alpha springs created by double point crossover, okay? Remember that these cutting points are defined randomly and it makes possible to create a set of possible alpha springs, which is a randomized operations. So after all, this is another crossover operator. And we have another one, but here we are going to say that which one of genes are inherited, for example, from first parent, and which one of them are inherited from the second parent, okay? Here I'm going to say that, for example, for the first alpha spring, these genes are inherited from the first parent, actually these five genes. And the other ones are inherited from, you know, the second parent. We can model these as zeros and ones. And you can write instead as these marks, actually one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero. And you can numerically multiply this element wise by this and it's complements by this to get the alpha springs, okay? So as you can see, we have the complement of these values. So we have cross here and cross here. Actually, these are complements of these check marks. And we have check marks here. So its numerical equivalent is 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1. So we can multiply this sequence by first parent element wise, and then we can find the value of first offspring. And this converts to process of generating new offsprings to an arithmetic to a mathematical operation. So this is called uniform crossover. And if you are going to find the value of offsprings, we can calculate these in this way. For example, one times zero plus zero times one equals to zero and it can be found directly from this and we inherit this gene from the first parent for this offspring you know for the first offspring actually so this part is zero and one times one goes to one so we fill this and and so on so we use these sequences so empty will remain empty and empty will remain empty we use this empty so it remains empty and we use this and finally that's it so if you calculate all of these or if you gather these five genes from the first parent in these three genes from second parent you will get this and for creating the second of a spring we do this in reverse direction actually with reverse values for these flags and then for example for this gene it must inherit from the second parent okay so it will be this and it will be one it will be one here and it will be empty it will be one here and it will be empty and it will be one here and it will be one as well so we have these offsprings as outputs of uniform crossover and if we want to write it as mathematical operations assume that we have first parent for example as the first parent we have x1 equals to x11 x12 x13 up to x1n and for the second parents as well we have x2 equals to x21 x22 up to x2n and we are going to calculate these values for offsprings, actually y1 and y2. 
And so we have these upper springs actually, as I mentioned earlier, y1 and y2. So x1 and x2 are our parents and y1 and y2 are the upper springs. So for calculating these values, we must create some flex. For example, a vector of binary numbers, zeros and ones, which named alpha. And for this, we have alpha 1, alpha 2, up to alpha n. And then we will have the value of two alpha springs as this. Y1i will be equal to alpha i times x1i plus 1 minus alpha i times x2i. And that's if alpha i equals to 1, then y1i will be equal to x1i. So the first alpha spring will inherit the gene and if alpha equals to zero, then this term will be zero. And this term, actually one minus alpha will be one. And so if alpha i equals to zero, then the first alpha spring will inherit from second parent. After that, we calculate y2i by this. Actually, one minus alpha i times x1i plus alpha i times x2i. And you see that this is the mathematical formula for uniform crossover. So we reviewed three types of crossover operators, actually single point, double point, and finally uniform crossover. And the uniform crossover can be represented by these equations as well. The next operator which I'm going to talk about is mutation. In the nature, mutation is a kind of error in replicating and copying genes and we included this mechanism and simulated inside genetic algorithm to add some levels of errors which increase the explorative abilities of genetic algorithm. Actually, it makes possible to create innovative and revolutionary solutions for our problem. So that's a good idea to have a simulated mutation process. So to do this, we have an operation which accepts a single solution and it returns a mutated version of that solution, actually a mutant. And it works in this way. For example, for the binary representation. From now on, I'm going to talk about the binary representation and later we will discuss about the mutation in continuous or real variables space, okay? For example, assume that we have this solution, actually this chromosome of binary genes actually x1, x2, up to xn, and we know that all of these are either 0 or 1. So firstly, we will select and index j randomly from 1, 2, up to n. So j is a random number, actually in this range, okay? And after selecting an index, we are going to alter xj using this set of equations. We have x prime as this, actually x prime 1, x prime 2, up to x prime n. And we have x prime i, you know, generally equal to x i for i's that are not equal to j. And if i's equal to j, then we must replace this value with a different value. And we know that we have 0 either 1 as possible value. So we are going to use this equation, actually this expression, which changes zeros to ones and ones to zeros. So if xi is zero, then x prime i will be one. And if xi is one, then x prime i will be zero. So this changes the value of x prime i. And this is a simple process. Actually, this is a simple mutation for binary representation and we can use this. However, you can select more than one index and you can select multiply indices to perform this kind of change in binary representation if you want. And that is defined by mutation rate and that's selecting, for example, two genes out of a hundred genes is equivalent to a mutation rate of 2%. And if you want, you can increase the level of mutation or the mutation rate and that's up to you however for different kind of problems and different kind of search spaces we will use different mutation rates and that parameter should be set 
according to the conditions of problem and search space okay so we have this operation here and we know that after crossing over we have some offsprings and we are going to mutate those offsprings to get mutated or mutate offsprings so this is the end of reproduction phase here step two and step three then we are going to talk about the selection operator here and here which are different from each other actually despite the fact represented by the same word they are different in nature but the selection operators will be taught in the next session in this session we are going to talk about the selections operators so assume that we have a population and we have individuals in this population which are evaluated and also we have the objective values and the population size is n pop actually number of population in other words we have n pop members in this population for example 100 or 1000 and so on well what we have as the simplest option is random selection which select randomly the parents from this population and that's equivalent to select for example k as the index of individual which is going to be apparent as a random number in this set actually one two three up to n pop so we are going to randomly select one member from this set as a matter of fact we are going to select the corresponding member at this population so it is a simple way to perform parent selection yet not the best way due to the fact that it doesn't use any information about the fitness of solutions and individuals in the population as a second method what we have here is tournament selection and how it works is running several tournaments among individuals of the population first of all we select a few individuals from population for example we select five members of the population actually five individuals and then we are going to select one of them as the winner if we select the best member of the selected group then we are going to perform deterministic tournament selection that selecting the best member of the selected group as the winner of tournament however these are probabilistic version of tournament selection tool and that selecting a member tournament as the winner with a probability according to a probability distribution which defines more selection probability for better individuals. For example, the best member of the group has the highest selection probability. On the other hand, the worst member has the lowest selection probability. So we define the probability distribution of selection at a descending order of fitness. So this is the tournament selection, which is one of the methods for parent selection in genetic algorithm. The third method is roulette wheel selection. This is performed by defining a probability distribution over the population and similar to the probabilistic tournament selection we are going to define this probability distribution in a way that the better member of the population have more probability of selection as parents and it can be defined in various ways and when we want to implement the roulette wheel selection we will discuss about the ways that are available to define the selection probabilities after that we are going to create a roulette wheels with areas proportional to selection probabilities of our members so as you can see we have an indicator here and we are going to rotate this wheel and when it stops then for example select this part actually which is red an account of the fact that the indicator show this area which is proportional to the selection probability so this is a simulated version of roulette wheel in random selection we have some probability for all of members in the population but this is not fair however it is really easy to implement at the tournament selection we are going to give chance of selection for the better methods actually for better individuals and at the roulette wheel selection we are doing it in a different way and also we have the chance of selection for any individual at the population yet the better individual has the more chance of selection okay at the fifth step of genetic algorithm we have evaluate sort and select and before step five we have the merging step which merges the main population with offsprings which are the results of crossing over and mutation 
So we have these steps and let's have a look to the way we carry out these steps. We have a population of parents here, actually the current population, which is called, for example, pop T. So this is our main population and its size in n pop. On the other hand, we have a set of newly created offspring, which are the results of crossing over and mutation. And, you know, I indicated it with children at, you know, for example, time t. And its size is, for example, m. So if we merge these two populations, we will get a population of size n pop plus m, as you can see here. So we merged these two populations, and this step is called merging. And after that, we are going to sort this population according to the value of objective function. And the sorting process enables us to have better members of population on top. So the numbers on the top of the population are generally better than the lower members. So we have this sorted population. However, the size of this merged and sorted population is still n pop plus m. After that, to start the next generation, we must select n pop members to have pop t plus 1, okay? So we are going to form pop t plus 1 of size n pop, and actually we are going to delete m members of this population. And that is selecting this part here actually, and removing these parts from, okay, from the sort of merged population. Okay, that's it. Step 4 and step 5 are shown here using this diagram. So first of all, we merged populations, then we sorted, and then we deleted the worst members from the end of the population, and finally, we have pop t plus 1. And then again, we will create children t plus 1, merge them, sort them, truncate from the end of sorted and merged population, and we will form pop t plus 2 and so on, okay? So this is the loop of evolution which guarantees to have better and better solutions at the different generations. At least we have the same records saved in our population and also we have probably some progresses at the finding better solutions for our optimization problems. Okay, so from the first part of the introduction of genetic algorithm till now, we reviewed the theoretical foundation of genetic algorithm and now we are ready to implement genetic algorithm from scratch. And we will start with MATLAB and then we will continue with Python as well. Firstly, we will implement the binary GA and then we will discuss about the real GA, actually the real coded or real genetic algorithm, which deals with real valued variables and real parameters in optimization problems.